Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. I'm Claire. This is Many a True Nerd, and welcome back to the Stellaris livestream. So, what we did at the end of last part, in the attempt to kind of try and catch up on the tech advantage, was, aside from some other stupid stuff, like we researched warp drives, which means we're kind of... Any minute now we might start tearing chunks out of the universe, and that will end badly for us, is we decided to take over four systems over here. Four systems that we then immediately renamed, um... <laughs> Shell Shock, Claire's Dinner, Salt Mine, Sex Car Gone, and Conch Blocked. What I did slightly wrong at the end of last term, for those of you who've missed this or misread this, you, you set species, you set rights for the species. So we, we got a whole bunch of these people, these snails, entering our territory. And I was just going through their rights, making sure that everything was fine. The problem and the thing I got a bit wrong was I accidentally enabled population controls. I can't change that back until 2361. If it hits 2361 and I haven't changed that back, start yelling at me in the chat, okay? So, basically, uh, yeah, I kind of... I didn't actually ban them, as people point out in the chat. I didn't actually ban them from having sex. I just banned them from reproducing. So, because they have sex, they just have to use, like, snail protection or whatever. Uh, but generally, it's bad and they don't like me for it. But in all fairness, like, they kind of hate me anyway. So, I'm not sure it actually makes that much difference. I I think it probably makes that much difference. It makes a bit of difference. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing down robot defense armies. So if they rise up against me, um, we should be able to destroy them. Uh, but what I need to do, basically, is I need to get the the unrest down. Because otherwise we will just have problems with... I mean, the thing is, these worlds, um, the buildings that are on these worlds, like, um, say here we are, this dark matter power plant. This should be able to produce 15. 15 energy. It's currently producing 1. The planetary unrest means 50% reduction. Happiness, they're so miserable, 20% reduction. The happiness is literally 0% right now. 40% um, of which is recently conquered, only 20% of which is the, the population controls. Um, and then another 30% has been reduced through inefficient planet management. So, generally it's not going well. Um, so we basically, like, these buildings, if we can get this population happy... Then, as a result, then this these would be, like, ridiculous high-yield worlds for us. They'd be stupidly high-yield. It also doesn't help that because we've had, entered, we've had all these worlds enter our territory, we're massively over capacity right now, so I kind of even need to... Uh, two problems. I need to probably shove a few planets into some systems and basically get them off my radar and get the number of planets that are actually being managed down. And I need to figure out how to get the snails to cooperate and stop being dicks about this whole situation. Suggestions from the chat to make sure that the snails become xenophile materialists and militaristic, you can use information quarantine to increase governing ethics attraction. The specific thing they're referring to is the policy, yeah, the information quarantine. So I can get people, okay, that's worth 0.8. I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna turn off droning optimizations to fund that. So just for the time being, information quarantine's gonna come on. So we're going to basically get people moving towards being xenophile and being more in line with me. Because the problem is we've got a lot of people, like a huge number of, um, basically all these pops are like spiritualists, I think, like pretty much all of them. Um, so like if we just kind of hover over, no, that's one of the worlds I can't actually do. Uh, if we just kind of go over this world, these guys are, yeah, spiritualist, spiritualist, spiritualist. The thing is, when you take over spiritualist empires, overwhelmingly they are all spiritualists, because spiritualists, one of their bonuses is that they get governing uh, governing ethics attraction bonuses. So overwhelmingly, this is going to be nothing but spiritualist. And you can see here, like as I go through, if you're just looking for that little symbol up there next to this, the thing there, it's pretty much all spiritualist. In fact, I, I'd be surprised if there was anything else. And as a result, they're all part of the conclave of spiritual redemption. So they've all joined a faction that immediately pops into existence, where they're all basically agitating for, you know, spiritualists to be good and whatever. There's things we can't change. Like, they hate, for example, robots, and we love robots robots. We can't do that. And synth rights, we love synth rights. And, you know, we love a secular state. So there's not much we can do about that. So what we need to do instead of actually trying to, uh, like, placate these people is instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into manage faction and I'm going to try and suppress the faction. Now, what that does is, yeah, it's basically going to suppress the policies and the values of the Conclave of Spiritual Redemption. So it will displease them and like-minded factions will blah, 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 blah. Basically, it'll make their ethics um, less attractive. What it's also going to do as a result is it's going to make them less happy because they're being suppressed. But they're already at happiness zero. So I think, actually, we may as well just kind of say, screw it. Faction happiness minus 20%. Everyone is in that faction is like already at like nothing. So we may as well just say, screw it. Yeah, spiritual 
Mr's Ethics Attraction minus 50%. So we're going to have plus Ethics Attraction to my Ethics, minus Ethics Attraction to their Ethics, and slowly the snails will start coming around to my way of thinking. Next thing's next, I need to sort out the problem of energy, which has gone to hell because one, where's the fleet? Yeah, the fleet's over there. The fleet needs to get back into orbit around uh, Vesta. So I'm just going to send the fleet back to Vesta to basically just rejoin over there. Yeah, and also upgrade the fleet to the latest designs. That's fine, so that'll probably head in that direction. Are you heading in that direction? Uh, yeah, there you are. You are indeed moving in the right direction. Beautiful. It's going to do it in... It's going to do it in two jumps because of the jump drive. That's just marvellous. Uh, so, yeah, that's basically heading home, and that will help out a little bit. But, yeah, we've got um, energy problems because of inefficiency because of this whole, yeah, problem of... Uh, this whole slide problem of that I've now trying to directly manage 11 planets. Um, are there some planets that could be ready to be put inside a uh, settlement? Tiberius is just about ready. Uh, Tiberius is... Wait, Tiberius, where are you? Tiberius, you're over here somewhere. Go to! Tiberius is... There it is. Tiberius is probably ready to be added into the... Yeah, into Lepkis Magna. There we go. We can still train troops there if we need to. So that's got one down already. So that you see there that like the, the power situation just kind of got... A lot better immediately, which is good. I got a colony. Oh yeah, we got that colony ship. You're never going to get settled. Sorry. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for gorse cannons. I could go for strike craft plus ten percent. No, I'm going to go for I'm going to go for the gorse cannons. Now this is the level five of the projectile weaponry. The reason why I'm going to go up to that is basically lets me skip a whole bunch of stuff. Um. Gorse cannons basically means, because I would have skipped head in that tech, I will eventually be able to get giga cannons, which is basically the same as tachyon beams, but as a projectile or a laser. Now, depending on what we're taking on, lasers might not be appropriate, because if what we're taking on has loads of shields, then, like, you're better off with a giga cannon. But if it's got loads of hull, you're better off with a tachyon laser. So having access to both so I could retrofit <laughs> out my ship is a good idea. <laughs> get the feeling that's a joke at my expense going on in the background there. Ooh. Tomb World Adaptation. That's worth thinking about. I've got some Tomb Worlds floating around in I mean, my that empire. that sounds ominous. What does that do? It just basically means I can actually colonise worlds that have previously been devastated by nuclear warfare and reclaim them. Mm. Um, which might be worth... I mean, there are... There's a bunch of actual... Hang on, I'm just going to pause for a second just because I know we've got some Tomb Worlds. Like, I think we've actually got three close by to each other. Uh, we've got this world right here that is actually in our borders. That's sciencey. Oh dear, um, we've kind of got terrorism and sex are gone. Um, so after a period of amount of tension, oh my God, we named it there. so on on sex are gone. Um, there's been terrorism, which is overreacting to the population controls. Quite frankly, that's an overreaction. So the governing ethics attraction is now unfortunately down 33%. So they're less. So on that planet, they're less likely to change to where we want them to go. Um, but it's fine. Everything's fine. So yeah, there's been a terrorist action. Casualties and property damage were minimal. Faith in Pax Romana's ability to protect its citizens has been shaken. A few people in the chat are saying you should just have embraced drugs and uh -huh. given them chemical bliss. I don't have chemical bliss. A chemical bliss would have actually been a really good idea. It's the one scenario chemical bliss is a good idea. Just basically when you've got like a completely undealable with faction, just basically chemical bliss them for 10 years and then accept the come down at the end of that 10 years. Yeah. And that's actually not a bad idea. Uh, but I didn't actually have that. So, on the Emerald Mausoleum, which is one of the um, the holy worlds we were told not to touch by the snails, we finally managed to scan it. It's got presentience on it. Now, presentience is really, really good. Uh, which one is that? And the reason they're good is because we could uplift them. They are Gaia. The flipping Gaia world preference. They literally can't live anywhere but Gaia worlds. Oh, la -dee da That's literally useless. So I'm assuming that they have 200% habitability on Gaia Worlds and 0% habitability boosted 25% by Starborn on other worlds, making them literally useless. And they're not even proles. Like, you might, it's worth uplifting, like, sometimes some presentients, because, like, if they've got things like, we're really strong, then they can be useful as mining things. But these guys almost feel like we should just basically move in and just eradicate them. We probably shouldn't, because we're like, you know, like xenophiles or something, but, you know. They're basically the most, like, precious princess species in the galaxy, which is they, they are only willing to live on perfect Gaia worlds, and nothing else will do. Ah, the smaller worlds have started going down. At this point, unrest is now down to 50 in salt mines, 
It's 86 on Sex Car Gone, and also there's been terror victims on this world. And Conch Blocked is at 78. But Salt Mines is making progress. And I'm starting to wonder if that might be because... Yes, look, that's a Xenophile Snail. Oh, nice. Meaning his happiness has jumped from 0 to 36% because his faction is happy. So as soon as we get rid of the population controls and the recently conquered wares off... Ooh, more people are migrating to the snail worlds. The bug people are moving in. Now, here we are. This is where things are interesting. So, traditions. Obviously, we're going to finish prosperity right now, which also gives plus two unity from all energy nexuses, which means this should immediately jump up from plus three, two, six, two... 377. Nice quick Ooh, jump nice. there. And that has also opened up an empty ascension perk slot immediately. So, 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 so. Um, now, there's a couple of things that are tempting. Imperial prerogative tempts me immediately because that's core systems plus five. So that means not only are we immediately covered, but we could potentially set down a new world. And if we want to eat that ring world later, we can do, which I think is tempting. Uh, Master of Nature, I find Master of Nature really interesting, Master of Nature, sorry, which is everyone says it's really good, and like loads of people like take it as their first, I don't really think it's worthwhile to be honest, I think it's a bit of a waste, but I guess like in the amount of money and research it saves you, maybe it's alright, uh, one vision, unity output plus 10% and governing effort extraction plus 30%, Kind of nice, we could probably do without it. I find technological ascendancy really underpowered. Like, plus 10% research speed seems to me really, really bloody low. Like, just that's just my view anyway. Now, what to do? We could go for Flesh's Week and start going down a robo path. Which is where we start thinking about everyone in the Empire starts becoming a cyborg to a view to basically my Empire being robotized. That is a possibility. Robot build speed plus 25% and minus 15% robot maintenance cost, which would save us a bit of energy. But I'm kind of... Or oh, we could go down more of a biological route. We can't go down the psionic route because only spiritualists are allowed to get psionic tech. So there's no way I can get a psionic tech at the minute. Um, unless I was to embrace some form of spiritualism, which I don't want to do. Although I, I do like the spiritualist value because the temple buildings mean they get way more unity than everyone else, which is really cool. No, I'm going to go for Imperial Prerogative. I feel like I need it because I just need the I need the extra worlds. And 13, 13 is really nice. So, there we go. So, we've got um, that system. Nice setup. So, now, that has immediately solved the energy crisis, like, straight away. The threat of forceful intervention has done little to dissuade the disruptive elements on Claire's dinner. In fact, the locals seem to have lost faith in this method of control. What's wrong with my dinner? Uh, well, the snails, basically, we put a load of robots guarding the streets to try and deal with them. But because there were so many robots, like, on every street corner threatening them, they've basically gone over to pacifism because they hate the idea of guns and whatever now. So that's actually fine, because if they go over to pacifism, that's better than spiritualism. So quite frankly, knock yourselves out. Why are you unemployed? You're not unemployed. Swap you round. That man is being listed as unemployed. Those energy credits are being marked as uncollected. This building has been... Oh, it's because I act I deactivated the farm, and apparently that's in that the deactivation applies to the square. So even if you demolish something and rebuild something, the new thing you've built remains deactivated. We just we forgot to plug in the stock exchange. This explains 2008. They just, they just unplugged the stock exchange on we... Friday. I just should keep an eye on this system over here, by the way. These are the systems that, if you recall, were taken off the hive world by... Oh, I think we found your... I think we found the envelope transport fleet. Nice. <laughs> just, just, just chilling out around here. We should just go and snipe that. They've just got, like, multiple worlds down here. It's... They're not doing a good job developing these planets. This planet is nothing but robots. This planet is mostly unemployed slaves not doing anything. They haven't bothered to build any bloody infrastructure. And shout out again to NB Brit who uh, did us more uh, snails lame is. Um, oh, let's hear it. Oh, so I need you to. I need you to do it in your best actual. I need you to sing this, Claire. I cannot sing this. Claire. Claire. Can't sing this. Although to be fair, if I did sing it and I sang it horribly, yep. it's on stars and like Russell Crowe can't sing either. That's true. So, yeah, know. so it's fine. <laughs> so so carry on them in that case. Snails in their multitudes, scarce to be counted, filling the darkness with order and slime. You are the sentinels, slimy and shell. 
You know I hate to sing. You made me do that. Uh huh. You are owing me one. Okay, right you. Now. Everyone needs to applaud Claire in the chat for that because Claire genuinely hates to sing. Claire's very self-conscious. Oh, that wasn't even that bad. That was about as good as I could have done. Chemical bliss. I'm gonna take it because next time we take over a fallen empire, it might actually be worth implementing. Or next time you take away rights for people, whilst you mean to give it to them. Yes, that's too technically. And then we've got ah, there it is. We've got ourselves mega cannon. Perfect. They just can't be bothered anymore. The Patreon <laughs> people. They haven't bothered showing up. They've just sent us. A, they've just sent us a broken email link. The Vitinius is dead. She was a good leader. She was a really good leader, Mercedes Ortega. Yeah. She was. She she did well. Damn it. Something very odds going on with the. Oh, do we have a new two Vitini? Which is odd because we've got. We do Vitini. have. It's. I'm not is sure. There a plural to Vitinius. Vitinii would would be that. Um. Yeah. I also we don't have enough influence to affect the result. So we're just going to have to abstain and let one of these two gentlemen become the next Vitinius. Our options are energy credits plus 10% and happiness plus 5%. Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. Or frontier outpost build cost and colony influence cost minus 15% or and charismatic. I'd much rather have this guy. I'd rather have happiness up and energy credits up, but we're just going to have to abstain. And the vote is going to continue until the beginning of the next year. And there's no way we can get enough influence to influence it in time. So, simply the new Vitinius, it will go down to... I'm not sure why we only get two. We got four last time. We did get four last time. So, we've... Oh, we've elected... Oh, no. that Was it? I swear that was the... Didn't he have a beard the yeah, one he liked? You know what? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. He's got... He's energy credit plus 10%. Charity people plus 5% happiness. He was previously the governor of the Geodude Geodude sector sector sector. Ah, okay. Also, his agenda is slave optimization. He's gonna... Oh, he's gonna get 10... <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't have slaves. Everyone hates that guy in the chat. <laughs> Why is he trying to optimize the slaves? We don't have slaves. Everyone gets social welfare and everyone's a citizen. Someone should tell him. Someone should let him know we don't have slaves. And a new Ascension perk just became available Ooh. too. Now a load of new ones have become available. Because once you've taken like two, new ones become available. So, new ones have just shown up. Galactic force projection. Naval capacity plus 200. Decent, but we're struggling to fill like even our starting fleet right now. This is probably the one I'm more interested in. Galactic contender. This is damage to fallen empires and indeed awakened descendances as well, is plus 33%. So basically we get a big power buff versus those bastards, the Apathy, and also the Thembalon. So if they cause trouble for us again, we are better able to hold our ground. You know a lot of people are saying you should just take the Flesh's Week. Claire put that straw poll together of Galactic Contender versus the Flesh's Week. If the Flesh's Week wins, I will honour it and we will indeed start turning all our populations into robots and head towards synthetic evolution over time as well. Uh, which would, yeah, ultimately mean we can start transferring the minds of our citizens into synthetic bodies, and then everyone will live forever. Which, therefore, we'll probably have to, like, you know, not do that until the current Vitinius dies, because I don't really want him to be the Vitinius forever. He's a, ve <laughs> oh he's a very... He's a very... Oh God. Because he's a very silly Vitinius. <laughs> basically. Yeah, with that wording. Why is the Srontor attack fleet just here? Where are you going? Our allies have just decided they want this void cloud in the middle of nowhere to die. I had no idea why they do, but they've just... Why would you do this? Just... The Rontor and the Ilkahan have basically just sent their ships to a void cloud at the edge of the galaxy that is in my space. They've just basically... They're doing pest control for me for free. And now their lasers are just tearing apart the void cloud, and that's... Now they're going to go home, I guess. What's your plan next? Do you have a plan? Okay. That was really weird. Our allies basically, they're so bored at the lack of war that's going on, they're now just sending fleets around to take out small pests. Actually, you know what we can do? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed up time for a second because it's all, there is something that is almost, almost ready to happen here. Almost ready to happen. Because if we hit September of this year, then a great historic injustice can be rectified and I think it's I think it's time
The snails Woo! can sex again. The, the snails, snails can have babies again. They can have little, little baby snails, or slugs as baby snails are called. Any second now, a new Hashtag little snacks. a new snail population. Actually, at the beginning of this next month, hopefully a new snail population will start popping up. The first new population in quite a long time. Was that? Uh, yep, yeah, look at that. It's the first baby snail. Snail baby! First snail population has just started growing. For the first oh. time. It's going to take a while. Reading sex to are going to sex snail. Uh, that, that, you know what? I think it's perfectly acceptable that sex, <laughs> that sex car gone shall be renamed sex car back. Now with that great injustice dealt with and the fleet in position, Operation Letter Opener resumes. Look, look what just happened to all the production. Oh, the wow. production just went nuts. Because at this point, they are acceptably happy. Okay, and my energy just went absolutely flipping <laughs> nuts as well. Okay, that's I'd say that's enough. That's definitely enough fleet. And Tabby's floating nearby as well. I'd say it's time for us basically to retake Pez Antwerp. It's time for that to re-enter the Empire. Because I'm kind of sad that that's not ours. In fact, while we're, while we're doing it, we could just actually have a little bit more off them too. We could just have Moblar off them as well. Just basically, let's just start eating a bit of their empire. Mublar. Mublar. Well, as we're not going to war with the Thembalon, I'm like, I'm willing to be a much more ballsy. Right, I think that's all of it. I think that's all of it. If it's not, we'll mop it up later, but I think that's everything. And as we're going to have to flipping get them down to pretty much 100 anyway, I may as well humiliate for 100 influence, you're right. So, we'll toss in that. That's 98. So that actually works out really nicely. Because that's the entirety of this bit of space. And also 100 influence. Um, I don't think this will be that difficult to do. I think, honestly, it will just be a bit of a, a case of just mopping it up piece by piece. Because I'm not sure it's actually going to be that, that difficult to do in the slightest. So, confirm that. I'm just going to go and assassinate their transport fleet, really. Because if their transport fleet's dead, they've got absolutely nothing they can do to me. So, I want these guys to go over here first so uh no what you know you have orders you have you have orders go 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 why what's wrong with you there we go it was just it got a bit confused right the thing is uh what i know we can do and this is all the upgrades for all the civilian ships um what i know we can do is this here is the tran pretty much all of the armies of the envelope people if we can just basically nail these guys right now, then... Nail the yeah, pretty much, yeah. There we are. Now we are just going to hashtag mail the envelopes. We're going to mail them to the wall. If we just take these guys out right now, they've got no army. They've got no army. They can't counterattack in any meaningful way. Oh, you made it into a pun, huh? Yeah, just... I did. Yep, Legio 1 is now engaging the completely defenseless, currently in-orbit transport oh. fleet. That is now going to, as a result, be... And there's one of their armies dead. There's one of their armies dead. Another one of their armies just died. And, yeah, we have got a lot of long-range laser cannons We've here. we got uh, Operation Return to Sender. Operation, Operation Return to Sender. Operation nice. Operation Letter Shredder. Mail the envelopes. Stamp the envelopes. Hashtag paper cuts. Uh, also, from David says, put them in the spawn folder. Yeah. I, quite like I think they just fled. I think they just fled, but we basically just destroyed ludicrously large amounts. And also, 24,000 backup strength from the Rontor have showed up. I think they've been waiting to do this one for a while because mm -hmm. the third Void Skulkers from the Combine of Zakul have just invaded. Um, over There is a small force over here. A 1,000 strong force has counterattacked into John's heart once again. But though they might take out the defense platform, a huge amount of damage is being done to them in the meantime. So that's absolutely fine. Right, Legio... Don't worry, John's heart is impenetrable. Yeah, pretty much. For once, I'm actually going to basically turn myself off the follow command. Because uh, basically I'm just going to tell my allies to go and do whatever the hell they want. Because this, these guys' power is pathetic. So if my allies just basically go around and start taking planets, like, for me, which I think they will do anyway, then as a result, like, I think they'll actually just work out better for us. So now as a result, yeah, those guys were just, like, 5,000 strength. Like, there's a third Starfleet up here with just 600 strength and a single basic defense platform. So I think we're basically fine. Just basically let my allies go around and do their own thing. Land the tabby armies. This should be nice and simple. Plus, I have sent Vlad the Ensnailer with them. Vlad the Ensnailer is still there. Even though his, you know, his main goal is, you know, dealing with snails. Um, he can deal with other stuff too. Vlad the Ensnailer should become Vlad the Unmailer. Vlad the Unmailer. 
Done. Oh, this is interesting. I think the fight's already begun, actually. I think we're going to be... What's happening? Oh, no, I think we're too late. I think the flipping the um, the Kassam Compact are basically already on top of these guys and just destroying them. It's just a few not particularly good quality battleships. So I was too late. Uh, the battle. This is the battleships of the Envelope people being torn apart by the Kassam Compact. I think they've been either destroyed or maybe a final few were able to flee, but pretty much... That world has already been occupied. We're up to 52%, so at this point we could start trying to enforce a small piece upon them. But quite frankly, I don't think we should do that. I think we should just basically crack on with what we have got. Because, uh, yeah, now we have got ourselves... We've occupied that world. We can now occupy the other world inside Mubla. Uh, and Legio 1, there is, in fact, turns out nothing to actually kill here. Uh, though I will actually move Legio 1 over to here in order to continue Operation Murder Your Transport Fleet. Because if we take out the transport fleet, once again, there's nothing more they can actually do. 100,000 power. I think that might be the first time we've ever passed 100,000 strength with our fleet. So we've hit 100,000, which is nice. It does look really badass. Yeah, with, especially with just Benor hanging out at the end there. There's all these fleets kind of feel like they match, and there's just Benor. Benor over on well, that ben side. Benor is the most impressive. I'm going to have to keep an eye on you and Ben, or I'm not sure I like where this is going. There's also two battles happening simultaneously in this system, which I like. This one battleship is going to war against this mining station. Uh, albeit, you know, I'm not sure it's going to be able to do much in return. Meanwhile, in the background, the transport fleet is just being absolutely... I like that. That's nice in the background. Just being absolutely nailed to pieces over there. Transport ships down, down. Army dead, army dead, and it's fled again. Oh, Hello. The Thembal on here. Okay, but we have some important flapjack related business. Yes, yes, fine. Um, right, so they said seriously, I never knew about British flapjacks until that stream. Claire, do you have a good English flapjack recipe? Boy, do I have a good English flapjack recipe. I love how Claire said she needs to do that at the exact moment when the Thembal on Reconquerors no, just, just showed up with their this. with their Titan ship. I'm with so the the Titan ship of the Thambalon Reconquerors is just passing by, suspiciously close to a world we're occupying. I'm kind of scared where these guys are going. Where are you going? You're entering the orbit of Naftigo. Why are you guys here? I don't like the fact you're here. I mean, I don't mind the fact that your strength is only marked as 74,000, and I'm like 100,000 and have bonus damage versus you. So actually, Legio 1 could totally have them right now. Hostile fleet... Present. What hostile fleet? Oh. <laughs> that was the hostile fleet. Aww. It just it just blew up. Aww. Literally all my allies have decided they want this world to be the one that happens next. Are you actually bothering to to land? Are you gonna land? That I think they oh, yeah, oh my Claire, look at this. Look at that. Not... Every single one of what? those that's a land every single one of those is a landing army. That's... Oh, well, I thought that was like a bomb or something. No, it looks like no, it's no, 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 when... no. Basically, this my entire federation can just handle this many armies simultaneously. It just oh, won. Armies. It just yeah, yeah, won. You, you, you better won <laughs> with that many armies. You better won. <laughs> Up to 70%. So my friends are over there just kicking ass. So I may have like the bigger fleet, but they've got like, this is the one thing the AI really, uh, does kind of fairly consistently. It builds like every single army under the sun. Like you can get away with far fewer armies than that. To my mind, the AI really overbuilds armies. The one advantage of overbuilding armies is it means like if you've got ridiculously OTT armies, you can invade a world without bothering to bombard at first. I mean, you can be much more mobile, but the AI never does that. <laughs> The AI instead just basically says, I'm going to bombard a world until it's got zero fortifications, and then I'm going to invade with all my ridiculous armies that would have been able to win anyway. They need to work on this a little bit, because, yeah, when lots of numbers of different fleets all kind of occupy the same space, they kind of just pile up. And, like, it's not like they're, like, you know, on different vertical planes. They are kind of in the same vertical I mean, plane. Possibly shooting each other in the arse. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of crashing into each other a bit there. So they're bombarding the hell out of the planet right now, and they're definitely going to get that planet down long before I actually have the opportunity to uh, take Subtranius. Yep, the best possible outcome. Now, wait for a second, and the... Oh, no, 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 I don't think you get to... No, 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 no. You don't get to do that, right? Stop. So, the independent... What are they called? The independent envelope fire tribes. You're not joining us. You are being vassalized immediately, and they will accept it. 
unfortunately. Uh, right, so I could also have them as a tributary, but now I'm going to demand vassalization instead. Demand vassalization. Confirm. Let's just make sure that gets confirmed. Very well, if you agree to defend us from all the horrors of the galaxy, the independent Lalatrepian fire tribe shall become your vassals. With that, that has now, yeah, brought them into the empire. These guys have now just lost, like, half of their planets. Oh, we're back at war again! The Apathy Peacekeepers attacked the Zucker Khan interplanetary. It's these bastards again! It's happened again! It's the, remember these bastards who dragged us into a stupid war against the Apathy? It's happened a second time! Only the main defender can set demands. Oh, it's not even up to me. They're going to set the demands. They're probably going to set stupid demands. Fine. Yeah, it's happening again. So here's, here's what's just happened here. Which is, these guys have indeed now been liberated, and they love us, and they're pathetic and friendly. So therefore, we totally 100% be able to vassalize them. But you're not allowed to vassalize unless you're at peace. And we're not at peace because the absolute bastard, bastard, Zuckerkun, independent, whatever, interplanetary republic has dragged us into this stupid war against the Apathy Peacekeepers again. So as a result of that, we can't actually, um actually vassalize these guys. We can't vassalize these guys. But we will be able to when we finally drag a peace against the Apathy. So, we have made some really, really good progress here today. Because what I'm going to say right now is, yeah, we've expanded our territory. We've brought these guys in as vassals. These guys can totally be brought in as uh, vassals. Hopefully if the Rontor, if the Rontor are willing to have them. Or maybe we'll just have to take them ourselves later, again. And these guys are, as soon as we have peace with the Apathy, we'll totally absorb them. And quite possibly we'll just absorb more of the bloody envelope people as well. Because they're probably pretty ready to be just absorbed. Actually, in just one year, we'll be ready to the independent envelope fire tribes can just be integrated. So all that together, because I'm pretty sure vassals count. If we just go over to the victory conditions for Federation, about two thirds of the way there. Uh, actually, more than that. Our Federation now owns 147 out of the 209 planets required. Thanks to the fact we've brought in the independent uh, fire tribes into it. <laughs> so, we're in good shape and for want, the economy's in really good shape actually. We're up to our fleet cap, which is very, very welcome indeed. We've probably got, yeah, about... Once we, if we, maybe if we've even got a better general involved and if we got the fire rate up from supremacy a little bit, then we'd probably be up to like nearly... Given we've also got, yeah, the 33% bonus versus Fallen Empires. At this point, with the Federation fleet, all our friends together, we could probably actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Apathy. And I think, by the way, I've just figured out why it is that uh, the Apathy fleets are a bit scattered. Which is, finally, after probably a bloody century, we've actually got a hot war on between the Apathy and the Thembalon. Which is, this Apathy fleet over here has taken a lot of knocks. A lot of its ships are very badly damaged. And this Thembalon fleet, exactly the same. They're actually at war properly. They've been kind of skirting around each other for a long, long time. But now, at long last, the two fleets have actually come to blows. And that gives me an opening. Because right now, those fleets are battered. So, those fleets are actually at war with each other. So they are vulnerable. Both Awakened Ascendancies right now are extremely vulnerable. We shall leave this off here, I think, yes. We'll pick up in a couple of weeks here, when it would appear, as there is now a hot war between the two Awakened Ascendancies, this is a chance. They are vulnerable. Now is the time to strike. We've got the economy, we've got the fleet, we've got the perks. It's time to do that. That is coming in two weeks. But in the meantime, I've been John. I've been Claire. This has been many a true dad, and this has been Slaris. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Goodbye. You know, I really hope we've agreed open borders with Japan, by the way. Otherwise, they have basically just invaded. I may have picked the wrong fight over... Yep. And my sisters, of course, have got even more flipping high-tech, though mysteriously still completely dependent on, you know, an aqueduct. Now, I'm not saying your entire army is mostly already dead, but it kind of actually is.